But he, Brian Alvarez, here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Saturdays with Jim Valley, Sundays with Andrew Zarian, and apparently today with myself. I don't know how that happened, but uh, here we are. We got a lot to get into here today. It's Wednesday on this show, and you know what that means. Tonight is AEW Dynamite, and it is... The season premiere. Yeah, season premiere. Which reminds me, by the way, of though uh, back in the day when uh, WCW had the uh, season finale. I'm still waiting for the next season. Hasn't come yet. It's been over 20 years. But anyway, the season premiere is today. And uh, by the grace of God, it's definitely going to be better. But it is AEW 2.0. I've never seen so many colors. We'll tell you about the new set and what they're going to be doing, as well as the lineup for the show and more. We got Vince McMahon, more on his stock sale. We've got more on the AW pay per view on Sunday and uh, plans that could have changed but did not. We've got John Cena teasing an appearance at WrestleMania, the suspension of Sammy Guevara. We have got Jack Perry. Now part of New Japan has joined the House of Torture. We have the New Japan Anniversary Show. We can tell you about that. Another inductee into the WWE Hall of Fame. Raw Ratings, BJ Whitmer, the NXT TV Report. My Lord, we got a lot to talk about here today. If you want to text us, 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. F4W Online at gmail.com. That is F4W online at gmail.com. I'm also F4W online on threads, Instagram, and Cameo. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter, otherwise known as X, and more. And we got a lot to talk about after the break. Back in a moment, Observer Live. And Rusty, now he's got his knee across the throat. He's joking him, LC. Well, it's like this week Alvarez has something to prove, brother. Something to prove to his sweet little lady over there. Of course, Adam Firestone with a big win over Black Dragon last week. Looking for another one here. There's a sunset flip. Is he going to go down? Yes, he is. Over he goes. One, two, three. It is all over. Adam Firestone with the victory over beautiful Brian Alvarez here in Portland Wrestling. Now out Brian Alvarez. Firing away with a boot. Action continues after the bell. Goes for the back body drop. No! Face first plant by Adam Firestorm. Your winner once. Looks like he'll be your winner twice. Action continues. There's a whip into the far corner. Adam Firestorm follows with a spinning kick. LC, I think Brian Alvarez has bit off more than he could chew tonight. Miss Rentone really disgusted over in the corner. Adam Firestorm not done. There's a lion sold on top. He hooks him again. One, two. Two and a half. I thought we had a three count earlier in this match, LC. I was wrong. I'm sorry. I can't sorry. believe it. I thought Youth Gone Wild was just adding a little salt to the wound. I thought Alvarez was out of her head and a two time loser, brother. Well, Mark Watson's hand must have stopped just short of the three count. And these eyes of mine need glasses because I thought I saw a three count Brian Alvarez going up top. Oh, we'll forget about your cataracts, brother. Up and up he goes. Nobody but- home. Adam Firestorm back in control, playing a bit of possum. He's climbing up top as Rento and Otto really upset. There he goes. Swap, oh, is that one yet? Here's a hook to leg. One, two, three. Now it's all over. A two-time loser. And does the LC have to look after Miss Rento and Otto tonight, baby? There's Adam Firestorm, your winner in this match. Once, twice, three times, it didn't matter. Brian Alvarez not up to a Miss Rinto Onato. Absolutely disgusted with it. Mark Watson explaining to him it was a three count this time. No hook the leg. Fair and square, Adam Firestone. Your winner here on Portland Wrestling. Fans will be right back with a, after a message from our sponsors.
Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Oh, I'm ready for an exciting day today. I'm going to shut down the chat. I don't want to deal with it. Already? What's the matter? Well, it's nothing that's happened yet, but I just know that as soon as I get started, we're going to make people mad, so Uh-oh. it's going to move on here. All right, so we got uh, a lot going on, not the least of which, Dynamite tonight. And uh, this is the least we have ever had announced for an AEW Dynamite. Ever. Ever? Ever. Ever? Yes. <laughs> we have two matches announced for the show, and the Young Bucks have an announcement. Usually by now, and like Monday, everyone was going, ah, oh, Tuesday afternoon, Tuesday night. Dude, it's uh, it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, we have Do two matches. Do you know where your lineup is? And you know, I've heard this from a lot of people there as well. They're like, you know, we had an awesome pay-per-view on, on, uh, on Sunday, and everyone's talking about it, and like, could we have some cool stuff advertised for tonight? Well, well, maybe they'll talk about it during the production meeting. They don't have them. We got Will Ospreay versus Kyle Fletcher. Which is taking place. Osprey is good to go. And we have Chris Statlander versus Riho. Riho's back for her semi annual win a bunch of matches, get a title shot, and lose. For those of you following this. And uh, the Young Bucks have a huge announcement. Mm. We've also got a brand new set, which, if you've seen it, it's exactly like NXT 2.0. It's so colorful. It's like, and this bothers you, doesn't it? It doesn't bother me at all. It doesn't bother it, me at all. As long as the show is better than NXT 2.0, which it will be, they could put on the worst show they've ever had, ever, and it will be miles better than the early days of NXT 2.0. Tony Khan told SI tonight is the perfect time for the company to debut a new look, noting Sting's retirement, the debut of Will Ospreay, as well as possibly others, at the end of one chapter and the start of another. So they're teasing another debut tonight. Who do you think it's going to be? I don't know. <laughs> AW previously yes, do. previously debuted a new set in January. Yeah. It's news to me. But uh, the reaction was mixed. He also noted that the response to the old school look they presented for Dynamite 200 factored into the updated design. He says, when I joined AEW, this is Mansuri, when I joined AEW in November of 2022, there was already a change in the works coming for Dynamite. That started in January of this year with a brand new set, brand new graphics package, and the reception was pretty mixed to it. But something was missing. The company has a very rich history, despite being a five-year-old brand. Tony has a wonderful sense of history. That's undoubtedly true. We did a throwback episode of Dynamite for Dynamite 200, and the reception was pretty big. Tony really listens to our fan base. There was a call to go back to the roots of AEW. Honestly, it is great to listen to your fan base, but Tony listens way too much to numbskulls on Twitter. And uh, that's another story for another day. But they got a new set coming up here tonight, and, and we'll see how the show goes. Got a lot they got to do. The Young Bucks, I mean, they got to talk about the tag titles. We got to set up that tag team title tournament and uh, and start building towards a pay per view, which is like six weeks away because we're going uh, late April for their next pay per view. So that is that. Now, we got to talk about uh, two other things, AEW related. One, and I'm trying to find out what Plan B was, but SI.com reports that AEW had a different finish planned in the event Darby Allen was too injured to take part. There was a plan B with a different finish in the event he could not return to the match, which turned out to be no more than a precaution. I do like that we did a spot where they knew in advance this guy may not make it back. Rehearsal occurred earlier than usual in the day. Stunt coordinator instructed how to place the items, review the proper protocols. There was also nearly... Nearby doctors anticipating the spot. They were on high alert. And uh, and that was that. Following the match, the atmosphere backstage was such. Some said they didn't want to leave the arena after. Photos were snapped. Private conversations took place. Endless hugs for Sting. Locker room was filled with crying, laughing, and chatter. So whatever it was, it was, you know, Darby not returning. 
I'm not sure likely who it would have been that would have uh, assisted, but I presume that the the plan B was a, another person replacing Darby. But uh, well, not well. Ricky Steamboat was already out there, so you could have done something in that way where Ricky Steamboat came and saved the day by doing something to the Bucks, and then they take him out from the apron, and then Sting gets the win that way. That, that that's you know. Now, you know, there was another thing that another wrestler brought up to me, which is an excellent, excellent point, okay? So Darby climbs up onto that ladder, and he leaps off, and he goes through glass, and his back looks like, you know, he fell into a volcano. And, you know, next day we hear, he only needed 12 stitches. That's great. You know, we all talk about that. But this person said to me, they were like, you realize that what nobody's actually talking about is that this total maniac climbed up. How high was that ladder? 16 feet. It had to be. I mean, it was no less than 15 feet. Okay. No less because Darby's probably about my size, maybe a little bit taller. And uh, this was way over double his height. Okay. So we're talking 12, 14, 15. It had to be way bigger than 12 because it was much taller than twice as tall as him. So then you have to add into that the uh, four-foot ring apron. All right? So let's just say, let's just say, we'll, 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 we'll go down. It was a 15-foot ladder, but he was actually falling 19 feet. Okay? Now, as many of you are well aware, when you, when you go through a table or a series of tables, just like, you know, they did the suplex off the stage to Sting, they did the Falcon Arrow to Darby. You know, you're crashing through a table, which is going to break your fall. And in both of those cases, they also probably had a crash pad underneath going off the stage. Well, this pane of glass, okay, forget the cutting aspect of it, okay? Forget the fact that we're dealing with glass. This was a pane of glass that uh, that he went through like butter. What actually happened? Let's forget the glass for a second. This guy fell 19 feet onto the floor. <laughs> That's what happened. Hard. Because the glass didn't break his fall at all. He just went right through that pane of glass. That is completely totally absolutely insane what he did and he lived but my god no one's even talked about that he fell 19 feet off a ladder onto the floor so anyway what yeah who was it wait who was this person that you talked to well i can't say who it was okay do they listen to this show uh, yeah okay if they do and that's the truth. Tell them to re-listen to Monday's show where we talked about the match. And I talked about the fact that this guy not only went through that glass, but he slammed his back against the chairs and landed on the floor from that height. It is in the... Yeah, YouTube they weren't listening clip. to you, apparently. We've talked about this. Many people have talked about this. Well, this the point was, the point was the vast Where majority of they? the people were just talking about how he went through glass and got cut all up and looked like he was wearing a red cape. Everything else was just, uh, you know, they ignored the rest of it. Apparently. But as far as like AW and injuries, well, we got to talk about Sammy Guevara, who has been suspended. Not injured. Well, Jeff Hardy, Jeff Hardy was injured. Jeff Hardy was injured, and that's yeah, in was. part why he was suspended. So we're going to talk about that after the break, and plenty more. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Sixteen when I first started training. Um, I think it's a lot more common here in the UK to start so young. Whenever I talk to Americans, they're always a bit shocked by it, but most <laughs> of the people that wrestle in the UK have been doing it since they were very young. Um, but yeah, I started, um, I started in a little town called Gloucester, which is where my parents lived. Um, and then I found my school in Cardiff where I live now in Wales, um, called New Wave Wrestling. And I kind of like grew into myself there. Um, but obviously it's a very little country. So 
we have to do a lot of kind of if I could get big here I can move across and I can get big somewhere else and um it just kind of snowballed very quickly um into obviously NXT UK and then here like I feel like it's all happened really fast and I have to kind of stop myself and be grateful and take it all in sometimes so I um I actually got interested in quite late, I guess, as a kid. I think I was only maybe 14 when I first started watching it. Um, so the turnaround between me watching it and deciding I wanted to do it was pretty small. Um, but my older brother was, like, obsessed with wrestling. He's 10 years older than me, and he'd always kind of stay up and watch the pay-per-views. And I remember one day I was just off work, uh, off school, sorry, um, sick, and I was in the living room just sleeping. And he came down and he was like, oh, can I watch the wrestling? Because obviously it's on at like 3 a.m. here in the UK. Um, so he came down and asked to watch it. And I was like, yeah, sure, I don't care. And I think it was like an elimination chamber. Um, but I remember just seeing it and then being glued. And from that day, I literally stayed up with him every Monday night before school on the Tuesday and watched it with him. Um, and then, I don't know, that very quickly became me just Googling wrestling school. Um and I literally went to the first one that came up. There happened to be one about 10 minutes from my house, which was very lucky. Um, but yeah, I just kind of, it was one of those things that it's such a strange thing to go and do that I didn't really feel like I could pre prepare too much for it. Um, the only thing I really knew what to do was to go to the gym. So that's how I ended up being really strong <laughs> because I was like, well, wrestlers are strong. So that's just what I did first. Um, and then, yeah, I just kind of turned up and obviously being so young, it was quite intimidating, but it was very, it was quickly alleviated by the fact that there were so many more young people there than old people. Like, I guess there was just an influx of people of sort of my generation that kind of realized, oh, we can just start, we can just do this. And even if you don't do shows for a few years, at least you're getting your feet in there, you know? Um, so yeah, it's a pretty, um, pretty weird place to grow up I guess to kind of become an adult around wrestling is always interesting but um it's always been very good to me and I've never had any bad times growing up for it Well, now we got to talk about Sammy. Here's the deal. So they had that Sammy Guevara match with Jeff Hardy. And uh, Sammy did the shooting star press and hit Jeff in the head with his knee. And yesterday we learned that he has been suspended. I heard that and I was like, oh, what? So the story, which has uh, been confirmed, this is what happened, is that when he did the shooting star press and he landed on Jeff's head, yes, they were upset about that, okay? And, you know, there's there's even some people that said that played part, that pay, played into it, but, dude, accidents happen all the time, all the time. If we're going to start suspending people for accidents in matches, I don't know what we're doing here. But he didn't do it on purpose. So then, the crux of this is after it was determined that Jeff was hurt, Sammy was allegedly told to either pin him, go home, whatever the term was. I don't know the exact term. And they kept going. And so Sammy was suspended. So here's the thing. Sammy was told, like, if, let's say he landed on the guy's head. And the doctor or the referee got word from the back, and the word was, pin him right now. And Sammy didn't pin him. Okay, well, he should, he should probably be suspended. He was told to do something he didn't. However, however... 
Is the ref suspended? Is the doctor suspended? If if a guy gets hurt in a match, is it not the referee's job to stop the match? Is it not the doctor's job to stop the match? If you want to suspend Sammy because they kept going, fine. But you also need to suspend the referee who didn't just stop it, wave it off. The doctor who didn't just stop it, wave it off. And nobody can answer the question as to why the referee and the doctor are apparently fine, even though the word from the back was, end the match. So, I don't know what's going on. And, you know... In the past, I'm talking way back, and not even way back, but like in the past, you know, injuries would happen in matches, and the wrestlers just wanted to keep going, and there was a time when they were just allowed to keep going if they wanted to, and there was a a very famous incident where Daniel Bryan, when he was Daniel Bryan in WWE, he got hurt in a match, and Triple H demanded the thing be stopped, and Bryan was so mad about it that him and Hunter almost got into a fight backstage over it. Brian did not want the match to end. So the thing is, well, where are we now? Are are we in 2024 or are we going to be in 2000? Well, a decision needs to be made about what's going on. If we're going to be in 2024, where if someone is legitimately hurt, the match needs to be stopped, then the referee, the doctor... Like, get in there and stop it. The onus should not be on the wrestlers. It should be on the people whose job is to... Right? Am I wrong here? Last time I checked, timekeepers wear earpieces, correct? Oh, the referee? The He's referee got an earpiece on. Ear the doctor's piece. right there. Doctor's got an earpiece in, and okay, so let's say they told Darby to go home, or told Sammy to go home. Just lay on him and let that be that. And he decided to plow through what the referee and the doctor were saying. And I'm going to finish this thing anyway. Then why didn't the bell just ring? Why didn't the referee try to, like, physically pull? I I just, there is something here. I don't know if there's more to this story. It feels like there should be more to this story. Uh, You know, it doesn't have to be you know, negative or in the shadows or anything, but there seems to be some sort of breakdown in communication here where, like you mentioned, Sammy is suspended, yet the referee and the timekeeper are not. And again, why did you just not ring the bell? Because I believe that's what happened in the Daniel Bryan match, and I know we've seen this in other matches where they will just go ahead and ring the bell. It's over. Stop it. <laughs> you know? I, I Obviously, there's a real communication error somewhere here. Well, you know, people are asking, there must be more, there must be more, there must be more. Maybe. maybe well, maybe yes, there was so more, but you know, you know what? Know. Yeah, there may be more, but you know what? The the, the, the story about him t- being told to take it home, stop, pin, whatever, okay, that has been confirmed. So, but the question still remains, if a guy got hurt bad enough that they say, take it home immediately, why didn't the referee stop it? Why didn't the doctor stop it? Well, that's the, whole that's thing. the question. Say, Forget the suspension. It Forget don't it. Say, don't say, well, maybe they should stop saying take it home from the back and just but say. I don't know the words. That's what I'm saying. I don't know the words. But, uh, but here's the thing. They here, may have said here, pin him now, and he well, kept going. If they said about, take it home, well, what do you expect the guy to do? You're going to go here's home. The thing. Here's the three words. All the three, only three words you need here are ring the bell. Then get away from them, don't move them, help them up, whatever. Then worry about that then. But, like, the only three words it sounds like you need, Brian, are coming from the back when they say, ring the bell. Or the doctor says, ring the bell. So, anyway, that's the update. And I don't know anything other than that. But a lot of questions being asked. And you know know what the most important thing is? What's that? Hopefully this leads to like a solution to this problem a a okay here's how it's going to be whatever happened happened but here's how it's going to be from now on somebody gets hurt stop it referee stop it doctor stop it that's it the onus should never be on the wrestlers now let me ask you a question is sammy guevara suspended right now did they need a process because he wrestled at least one time after that match so there's another 
deal here unless i guess you have an automatic i'd like to fight this suspension that you laid down or something like that i mean i don't know if that'll end up coming out but that's interesting in the fact that he's suspended now as opposed to immediately afterward why did he go ahead and wrestle then what was the delay in letting this happen it's just i don't know i don't know uh, during a well, actually, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know any. I don't know any circumstances, but you know, sometimes I will say that sometimes when they have disciplinary things, like you know, what Tony Khan likes to do is investigations, and uh, sometimes when something happens, it's like, okay, this happened. You know, considering suspending Sammy, I want you to talk to various parties, blah blah blah, and then you know, the the punishment finally comes down. So I presume that's what happened is, you know, should it take that long in a case that would be pretty clear cut here? If, you know, even with a, I don't know, even with some sort of way where he can respond. You realize Jack Perry it. isn't even back yet. But is <laughs> like is that, that age? happened in at Wembley. But is that a storyline thing? No, he was actually suspended. No, and fool. Why he's still out now? Is it a storyline? I, I mean, presume. Uh, listen, in hey, the game. you know what? I presume so, but I yeah. don't know, and nobody else knows either. Well, <laughs> like they don't know what's going on. Maybe because has- nobody is told anything, and and even <laughs> even Jerry Lynn. Like there there was a thing the other day where somebody. Uh, I don't want to talk too much about it because I don't remember the whole thing. But like people were asking, you know, why don't why don't the wrestlers get told more about what's going on? And Jerry Lynn was well, we don't want word getting out about what's going to happen so we just don't tell them anything like this is a thing okay a lot of people have absolutely no idea what's going on i can tell you for a fact there's people at the building today who have no idea what's going on they don't know if they're on the show they don't know if they're working they're waiting they're waiting to find out what's going on and and that's how it is and the funny thing is you know what's funny is i talk to people there all the time and and back when people actually were told what was going on, nobody told me. Nobody ever told me, like, what was going on. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to beat so-and-so at the pay-per-view or whatever. Like, you know, they would tell me non-spoiler-related stuff. Like, all of the spoiler stuff that I talked about on the show, all the predictions everything, that was just because Tony logically booked. It wasn't because someone told me that such-and-such such was going to win a match. No idea whatsoever. No one ever told me anything. No one ever told me pay-per-view finishes, match finishes, nothing. And I I don't know if maybe, you know, so many predictions were right that they just figured, well, the wrestlers must be talking about it, so we just won't tell them anything anymore. But that's not what happened. And uh, it's just weird. But anyway, more news. We got plenty. Let's see if there's any other AEW news. Oh, Jack Perry's in the House of Torture. What's so funny? <laughs> well, he's going into Chicago at Windy City Riot. He was already going to be booed. So what's a way you can double down on that? Well, put him with the faction that is the most maligned in all of professional wrestling. Yes, even more than the bloodline, because there are far less New Japan fans in America and in the West than there are WWE fans. So, you know, if you go person by person, you know, everybody hates the House of Torture. So seems to be kind of fitting in a lot of ways. Jack Perry beat Shota Umino. He beat Shooter. How about that? What's that noise? I have no idea what noise. Are you okay? It's at your house. Take your headphones off. Is that an alarm? Apparently, it's uh, Alfred Hitchcock's bird. Yeah, what's going on, dude? It has just stopped raining, so I believe all of the birds are seeing all of the worms and seeds and such and have decided to descend upon the neighborhood right now. we're going to a break. Lock the doors. (laughs) Back in a moment. Observer Live.
Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VV, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Uh, BJ Whitmer, sentence on charges relating to his arrest last year, was arrested June 4th, 2023, charged with second degree burglary, first degree strangulation, alleged to have entered a former girlfriend's home, waited for her to return, assaulted her. Quote, Mr. Whitmer grabbed her by the throat, threw her down on the couch, began strangling her, the police report reads. The victim would later tell media she was, quote, fighting for her life during the assault. Whitmer took an Alford plea, meaning he acknowledges there is enough evidence to convict him, but he still maintains his innocence. It also means he can have the felony expunged from his record after five years. He has been sentenced to five years probation, 120 days of house arrest. So that is the update on B.J. Whitmer. Sounds like he got off easy. I've never even heard of that plea. I've heard of it, but I didn't. I I don't know. But then again, you know, I wasn't in the courtroom. I don't know what's going on with the case. I did hear her recounting her story to the media, and I did read the police report initially when it came out, and it it seemed pretty nasty. And obviously, he was fired from AEW after that time. And again, you can have this expunged from your record in five years. And again, I I get I I, I just originally how this thing was reported to me he seems to get off easy here john cena was a guest on espn today and he said we're talking wrestlemania 40 crossing my fingers i hope the jorts are there (laughs) so he wants to do wrestlemania i guess that's an easy payday brother for john cena It is. It is. That's for sure. And hey, look, they could, they could use the the star power, you know, just to lump on like extra icing on the cake. You might as well go ahead and do it. You know, you have the Rock there. You have uh, Triple H's name being brought into things because the Rock is back. John Cena, who did have a, a nice little run there. You know, why not? You have two days. You have a lot of time to fill and. This year, more than any other, if anybody ever thought, boy, WWE's too mainstream, boy, they suck up to these places too much, it's too corporate, it's too this, you just wait and see what happens. I can imagine an ESPN Sports Center taking place from WrestleMania, the site and the location of WrestleMania, a Marty and McGee taking place from there. You know what I mean? Like, absolutely, that's going to happen. Pat McAfee is going to host his show from there, obviously. Why would he not? I could see a lot of people doing this. And listening and seeing what WrestleNomics put up today about Mark Shapiro, or whatever, I believe it's Mark Shapiro, whatever his name is, Uh, talking to Merrill Lynch and talking about all these things that WWE, they can do with WWE. He talked about the fact that Vince never advertised on the mat, never liked it, doesn't do a whole lot of advertising in the arena. And Brian, we've talked about some of the advertising they've done for matches and in the arena. I can only imagine what it's going to look like here in the next coming months and years when it comes to the makeover they're going to get and how they continue to promote themselves and how they, with TKO and Endeavor behind them, how they continue to just saturate the media that's out there and continues to put themselves in just a a very advantageous situation. I want to mention here that uh, same thing we've been talking about for a while, the uh, AW's got to announce matches, dude. We just got the uh, numbers from WrestleTix. The uh, show tonight is uh, just under 3,000. And the last time they were here for a Dynamite, they did uh, 5,400. And they're uh, just under 3,000 now. And as we've seen, the thing with AEW is when they announce big matches, they sell tickets. And let's announce some matches. It's a broken record, but... Uh, Let's announce some matches. And they've also got Collision, which I don't have the numbers for yet, but uh, WrestleTix here notes uh, it's possible 
Some of these seats are occupied. When a show is not doing well, you see this amount of map changes, which they've had. And Collision's map is much worse. So I don't know what Collision is at. But uh, we have zero announced for Collision, which I think takes place tomorrow. Is that right? It's Collision tomorrow? Taped in, I know it's taped in advance. That would, I guess, make sense. Let me see. Let's see if I can find it. It's AW Rampage. I'll see if you can find it. Good audio here. Yeah, it's great. Well, you know, I'll talk about Raw ratings. You know, this was another one. Raw, Raw did an okay number. Didn't do anything great. The uh, show did 1.65 million viewers and a .54. Still first on cable, beat everything on television except The Bachelor. Had some basketball competition. But uh, the key is that it was just a normal pattern. 1.7 million first hour, 1.7 million second hour, 1.5 million third hour. They lost a lot of viewers in the third hour, which is which is normal. But, you know, the point is, and I thought it watching the show as well. I was watching the show. And I love Drew McIntyre. His character is great. This is the best Drew McIntyre has ever been. But the main event was Drew McIntyre and Jey Uso. And I know they don't like each other. I know they've been feuding. But I was like, why is this match taking place? It's not a number one contenders match. It's not a championship match. There's literally nothing about it that plays into WrestleMania at all. It's just a match with two big stars. And apparently a lot of other people thought the same thing. So there have been a few Raws of late where, you know, they announce a main event and it's like, okay, that'll be cool and all, but like, what's the point? And there is no point, and and that's that. And again, you know, we got five matches between two nights of WrestleMania right now. WrestleMania is two nights. There's probably going to be nine matches, ten matches each night if you count the pre-show. We need 20 matches for WrestleMania. We have five. And they could have done some segment to set up a match in the main event. They could have done whatever, but they just did a match, and that's what we got. So. Yeah, and I get I guess they have their reasons for doing this too, but it's like you could have already announced Jay Uso against Jimmy Uso by now, which, you know, could play you know, could played in the last night and plays into things. The only I guess reason that you are not doing that is because I guess the Rock hasn't said Jay's name directly, and I guess maybe with Jimmy being involved with the bloodline, you don't want to go ahead and make that call yet because you have some things planned where you're going to have Jay interact with The Rock or with Roman or with something like that. But I think that's a great example of, like, what are we really waiting for when it comes to Jay versus Jimmy here? You know, obviously, to me, that just must mean we have something that's going to be related to The Rock decreeing something with the bloodline. Uh, then a couple of things from the uh, NXT show. I like the show much better than last week. But there was still... It's still a very hit-and-miss show. And the most notable thing about this show was following up exactly what I said last week. I made a prediction for the main event, and they did exactly what I was afraid they were going to do, which to me is so the wrong call. The main event was Carmelo and Tony D in a number one contenders match. The winner is getting Ilya Dragunov and standing to deliver over WrestleMania weekend. What did I say last week? I said, why are they doing this? The obvious match over WrestleMania weekend is Carmelo Hayes as NXT champion defending against Trick. Trick beats Carmelo, wins the title. It's the match. I said this last week. It's the match everybody wants to see. It's the most obvious match. It's easy to set up. But what did they do? They inserted Tony D. I'm a big fan of Tony D. He's great. Okay, but he has been doing zilch, okay, zilch, and all of a sudden, one week, he decides, I'm going to go after something big, and the next week, he's inserted into the title picture, okay? Yeah, yeah. So, it's Carmelo Tony D in a number one contenders match. The winner gets a title shot on the biggest NXT show of the year, and there's no heat. Why? Because Tony D is in there. And, again, nothing against Tony. But what does Tony D have to do with 
anything related to the biggest NXT title match on the biggest show of the year. So then, Trick's music hits, and I'm not kidding you, there's only 300 people in the building, but this was one of those shows where it felt like there were 5,000. These people went nuts. And it ended up being a ruse by Tony. Carmelo was distracted. Tony D rolls him up for the pin. So it's Tony D versus Ilya Dragunov for the title over many a weekend. So then after the match, Tony says, well, you know, I apologize for that trick I pulled, but, uh, you know, Carmelo, I got one more surprise for you. Trick's music gets again, and Trick comes out, and he beats up Carmelo. And I can't say the words I used in my television report for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com, but they lost it for Trick. This guy is the most over guy on the show by 50, okay? There's nobody close. Who is close to his over his Trick on this show? Like, even close. Nobody. Absolutely nobody. And it, he's the only guy that they care about. And he's coming out to face Carmelo in a match. No title on the line. Nothing. Now, the only, literally the only explanation for this, and if this is the reason, I will begrudgingly say, fine, whatever. The only possible reason for this is that, like Solo Sokoa, they want Trick on the main roster on the night after Mania, and they don't want to beat him again after that. That is the only excuse, okay? There is no other excuse. If he's going up the night after Mania, and they're strapping the rocket to this guy, and they don't want to beat him for the NXT title after he's been called up, fine, okay? Outside of that, flabbergasted that they have made this call so we'll see i dis i disagree look i agree with you on how they inserted tony d because he had no hot way out of that tag title program and it just seemed like you you pushed him in there but i think of all the people that you had i don't think almost uh, of anybody who came out of the nil type of system like He's been amazing, and I know this is maybe not the time to have his gold watch moment, but I think a match against him and Ilya at Stand and Deliver makes a lot more sense than Carmelo and Trick in that mix because people just want to see Trick get his revenge over Carmelo, and I think he's going to get that, and I'm sure we're going to have a gimmick match, and I know Trick is going to stand tall at the end, and maybe you can do it in a gimmicky way where you don't have such a direct loss and you have a way out if you are going to debut Carmelo on the main roster on that Monday. No, but Trick. What, Trick? If they want the to call up Trick the night after Mania, look, and they don't want to beat him afterwards. that's Look, calling up Trick is insane. Look, that's like he needs to be an NXT champion. There are so many things that he can do there and continue to get better. They have Carmelo that they need to call up. They have Braun Breaker they need to call up. Trick is great. Trick, Trick has come a long way. He could still stand some seasoning in NXT. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Oh, it was so cool. It was it was terrifying more than anything. Um, I almost wish I fell off right at the end and I almost wish I'd have fallen off earlier on because at least it would have been done and it would have been out of my system. But the fear of falling off of that thing is so much worse than actually falling off of it. Um, but it was it was so cool. Like the amount of things you can do in a match like that, if you think of all the things you can do in a match and then you add six other people and then you add this huge structure that you can all hang off of, you know, like there's just so many ways to get around it and obviously I was sharing it with some incredible women too um lots of women that I'd never even wrestled before so that was a whole thing in itself um but yeah it was crazy it was it was a great time but I reckon I, I'd like to do another one but maybe not loads of them <laughs> yeah it is cool I guess that match was such a, especially it being the first TNA pay-per-view um in a long time it, there was a lot of eyes on that show and obviously the first match the first match on the show so it did really kind of throw me into the deep end a little bit of so many people that might not have even been watching 
um, TNA at the time had tuned in because this was the first pay-per-view back and then I'm one of the first people they see and they might not have even ever heard of me. So it was a really nice way, I think, and a really good showcase for me to kind of show what I'm all about in like a really exciting way as opposed to just being, you know, brought on on TV, which would have been great, but it was so exciting to do it, you know, in Vegas, on live pay-per-view, like there was so many cool things about it. Yeah, it's great. I think it's really kind of exactly what I needed at this point in my career. Obviously, like you said, I was in NXT UK a bit, um, but I was even younger when I was there. I was about 19 when I signed, so it's a lot to handle at a very young age. Um, and then I had a year or two out just doing the independence like throughout the UK and then coming over to Canada and we started doing stuff with Impact at the time. Um, it really helped kind of, I think, level me up as much as obviously I'd been in WWE and that was really cool. I don't think I was necessarily ready for that sort of stage at my age and my experience level, you know, but it gave me so many tools that I think now I can bring to somewhere like TNA where I'm a bit more grown up, a bit more experienced and a lot more prepared for it. Um, so I really think it's like the perfect place for me to be right now um, to kind of show the rest of the world what, say, here in the UK, everybody else already knows. Um, so it's nice to be able to share it and get a bit more kind of like nat uh, international notoriety, I suppose. It was crazy. Like, obviously, we'd done a little bit with them with subculture. Um, so it wasn't out of nowhere, but it was very much like, OK, like, they understand what I'm trying to put out into the world. And I think that's the biggest thing I've got from it is that there's a lot of trust in someone giving you a job like that. You know, it's them going, we know that you know what you're doing and we want to help you get there. You know, Lenny had a great idea that would be a great idea 99% of the time, but not this time. He said Trick should come up. Night after Mania. Beat Gunther for the Intercontinental title. Oh, come on. Well, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Even if you think Trick is ready, the problem is this. There is no way that Sami Zayn is winning this gauntlet going to WrestleMania and then heading to Montreal a week later a loser. It's just not happening. So I believe that Sammy's winning the gauntlet. I believe he is winning the title. And I believe he is going to have a massive homecoming to Montreal a week after WrestleMania. Other than that, good idea. <laughs> I got to be honest. I just think that a week or two after Stand and Deliver takes place, you won't even remember about Trick not being in the title picture because he is going to be in the <laughs> oh, yeah. NXT title picture oh, yeah. at some point. Look, I mean, mm. you can blow it off and laugh all you want, but the bottom I'm line I'm not going to is... forget it. That's the point. I'm sure he <laughs> will be in the title picture, but I'm not going to forget. No, when he gets by probably... far, their match will get the biggest reaction on that show by multitudes. And you will miles even, beyond and Tony even D and Ilya. with that, you will bring it up ad nauseum. Yep. That they did not do what you wanted them to do. Not even me, if Mike. It is the fans. Even if it's the insanely, people. No, it is not. I'm That's a man of the you. people. I'm like, no, you are Dwayne. Not. Please, you are Dwayne. You're That's supposed to be an insult. You You're comparing me yeah. to The Rock. Okay, I got it. Hey, we're out of here, everybody. Bye-bye. We'll see you tomorrow with, uh, actually, we'll see you tonight, Observer.com, Wrestling Observer Radio with Dave. Check out Brian and Vinny last night. It was fun. Especially Granny's Trivia Contest, where I crushed everybody at Sports Trivia. Talk to you next time, Wrestling Observer Live.